What's up, JR Aviation? Welcome back to the channel. We got a brand new video, guys, coming at you, and this is going to be an extremely good one because we have a guest here today, Mr. Jeffrey, the pilot. Thanks for thanks for sitting down with us, Absolutely. talking. Thanks, um, thanks for coming over. We have a fun video plan. Yeah, guys, we are in Toronto. We're in Canada. <laughs> First time ever. We, Christian, and I have never been to Canada. This has been an experience so far. A lot, lot, lot of similarities. yet a lot of differences from the U.S. So he's still um, wearing shorts. <laughs> Yeah, it was warm when I left, not so much anymore. But we wanted to do a couple videos in person, um, so that's why we're here today. And Christian, what do we have in store today? What kind of video? Yeah. Really taking the opportunity, taking advantage of this opportunity with Jeffrey the pilot here, aviation social media expert. Um, so really wanted to think what, what we could do for you guys with this opportunity. Think of um, a couple questions that we've maybe received a lot of, especially questions that we didn't have the answer on that we're absolutely nowhere near an expert on or didn't have any sort of authority to be answering. So um, that's why that, that's why we want to take some of those questions, um, put them on the table here, and, uh, and get that expert authority um, answer for you guys. Yep, and a huge one we get. A lot of you guys out there are maybe at a point where you want to start, uh, maybe you want to be a pilot one day and you really want to get into it as a career. So of course we we can't talk about that. We're we're not going to be doing yeah. aviation as a career. We but can, we can share the excitement <laughs> this is of perfect. wanting to get started with you guys. But that uh, that even that first step, we're we're just at the beginning of that first step. But um, uh, Jeffrey here has taken you know a number of steps to get where he is today. Been and, in the industry uh, for how long? Go Almost 20 years now? 20 years, yeah. Boom. 20 years. So perfect. So take us, give us a look at that timeline, kind of how you started. Why'd you get into aviation? Your starting years and then maybe your first steps to getting your private license because that's where probably a lot of people are at who are viewing. Okay. Um, well, it all started uh, like many of you as, as whether it be a young child flying with your family on, I'm in Canada, so I was on Air Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, just seeing the pilots walk out to the airplane and the, mm -hmm. I don't know, there was a, there's a feeling there watching these guys of admiration for me anyway. Right. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. On top of that, my father is a pilot, as, as you guys both know. Mm -hmm. You guys, we met at Oshkosh, where mm -hmm. all pilots go Oshkosh. during the summer. Yeah, that's right. Um, my father's a pilot, so I got, I like to say I was brainwashed as a child. At mm -hmm. uh, three years old, two years old, I'd be taken out of the car seat. Uh, in my car seat, still out of the car, and then we're in the right seat of my dad's rented uh, Piper Boom. Cherokee back in, oh god, it's the 80s. Wow. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> um, and that kind of started it for me. That was my springboard into it. Uh, my father's passionate about aviation, so mm -hmm. by default, I got that same passion. Uh, weekends were quite normal for my family to get in the airplane and fly a half hour somewhere for, for lunch or breakfast or dinner or see family nice. or friends. And back home, so aviation became, to me, very normal and almost as normal as it is for many of you to get in your car and go somewhere for dinner. Yeah. So it, it started off that way, and it just grew. And it helped along the way, having all just like being so familiar with it. You were telling us at breakfast, so like when you started to get your pilot's license, right. it really helped being in the plane a lot, hearing the radio chatter, and right. seeing all the gauges. So that was big. I tip. grew very comfortable being in an airplane at a very young age. Um, and, and like I was telling these guys earlier, uh, in, in flying you start off learning how to fly based on a sight picture, VFR, visual flight rules. Mm -hmm. And as a child, when I was two or three years old in the car seat, my dad would give me control of the airplane. I couldn't see over the dash. Mm -hmm. So I had to look over at his instruments and get comfortable keeping the airplane upright and level at altitude from staring over at instruments across the way. So when I started doing my private pods license, my instructor was telling me to look outside because I was always staring inside. So I was naturally mm. comfortable with instruments and uh, naturally comfortable being on the radio and so on and so forth because I'd spent so much time in airplanes. Wow, so it sounds like before the first step is having a passion for it, you, you'll already uh, realize that in yourself if you get excited by um, you know, planes and, and pilots and, and looking up to these kind of people. And then that, that first step, because that was, that was the step zero, that first step is maybe surrounding yourself around aviation or um, just kind of getting around it, learning as much as you can about it and being uh, just having an open mind or gathering as much kind of information about it as you can. And now with Google and YouTube, 
Boom, you have right. so much at yeah, your fingertips. Right. Like yeah. YouTube videos, watching pilots fly and all this stuff. There, yeah. There's so much you can do. So if a family member is not a pilot, if you don't have that um, bonus, then uh, then there's certainly YouTube videos out there. Or go to an and airport, uh, go to a local airport, right. maybe meet yeah, some or, people, network with others. We always talk about in business how networking is huge and now networking in the aviation industry, that's how we met at Oshkosh, go to shows. Um, that would be big. So, so when did you, what, how old were you when you started getting your license? I started flight training um, on the books in a log book uh, at 18. Mm -hmm. um, uh, up until that point, I mean, I, I have, I probably have hundreds of hours of unlogged time in my dad's <laughs> aircraft over the years. Yep. Cool. But uh, sadly, I never put any of that to a log book. Mm -hmm. It's kind of silly at this point. I should have gotten a, a student pilot license as soon as I could have and, and maybe been able to do some of that. But uh, gotcha. my first logged hour was in 1998. And mm -hmm. uh, today I have about 9,000 hours. So wow. Holy it's, been a, it's been a road up to here. That, yeah. Okay, so getting, so now, um, did you did you always know you wanted a like a career in aviation, or did you maybe want to be an airline pilot, or how'd you go the corporate route, or very good question, or aerospace in school, or something? Yeah. Right, no, those are that's a that's a great question, and it's one that, uh, in my experience, I I it was an evolution of uh, of the career and life, I guess, all at the same time. I guess when you're in those young years and your teens, your career, your life, it's all one big evolution. So for me. Of course, I fell in love with those Air Canada pilots walking down the terminal into yeah. this big, huge jet and flying uh -huh. all of us somewhere. And yeah. uh, that was my initial goal was to go to Air Canada. Uh, I did an Air Canada interview quite a few years ago, and uh, at the time, I was offered a very good job in business aviation here in Toronto. Mm. And I told them in the interview, I wanted to be honest and upfront. And I think that's a it's a good piece of advice for everybody getting into aviation. Um, bridges, burning bridges in aviation are a hundredfold worse yeah. than they are outside of it. You're, it's a small industry. Um, I mean, I just met these guys at Oshkosh. Yeah, now we, we're in my living room. Having <laughs> so the, the, the industry is small. The amount of people that are into it are small. So I interviewed with this company, told them I was, I had interviewed in Air Canada. If I get the job, I'm going to take it because I think it's what's best for me. So I obviously right. didn't get the job. But mm -hmm. after that, because of that honesty and things didn't go well with the Air Canada review, I didn't get hired back in 05. Um, I got hired in business aviation because of that honesty. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that springboarded me into business aviation and I soon realized that I enjoyed it a lot more than, than the airline flying that I had been doing up until that point. Uh -huh. So here I am. Yeah. Very nice. Now, years later. What was your first plane that you flew? Or like jet? Business. My first yeah, jet, jet was a uh, Citation Bravo. Okay. Um, which is the end of the road for those classic old kind of stubby looking Citations. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was right. kind of the last last iteration of that. And I flew that for five years here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, they grew that business and managed a bunch of other aircrafts. Uh, a Premier 1A, uh, eventually two Premier 1As. And then they got a Hawker. I flew all of those types for them. Wow. Um, Which was your favorite? Favorite jet you've ever flown? Um, my airplane I just finished with was the uh, Citation Sovereign. Um, mm, it's, just nice. the, it's just the ultimate pilot's airplane. You, it's mm. loaded up with fuel, loaded up with passengers, loaded up with bags, and still go for you know 2,500 to 3,000 miles. It's across, um, across country. No it's problem. a cross country machine, yeah. It was, it was a really nice airplane. Wow, very nice. Um, so the time you got uh, like that, that job and you really got into it from the time you left like flight school, how did that look? Uh, did you have to like build up a lot of hours or did you have to get certain certifications? Yeah, yeah I, I graduated uh, through an aviation college. That's, that was my route through to okay. pilot's licenses. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, once I finished aviation college, I moved down to California. Uh, uh -huh. I got a work visa down in California. I flew cargo. Uh, 135 cargo uh, up and down the coast of California. I did that from 300 hours to about 1500 hours, 1600 hours. Um, all the while, I was applying at a company here in Toronto that I'd always wanted to work for. Every month they got a resume from me. Mm -hmm. And then every, that was usually sent out on a weekend. It was the only days we weren't flying cargo. And then I and then followed up with it on Monday with a phone call. So for, you know, a year and a half, almost two years, wow. they got a resume every month. Wow. I'm, I'm a very focused person when I want yeah. something. I kind of mm -hmm. choose a company I want to work for. I applied every month with resume updates and followed by a phone call. And it got to the point where they were probably just 
annoyed with me to the point where I think he'll be less of a problem if we <laughs> hire him. So uh, oh my they inevitably hired me when I came back to Canada. My work visa expired, and I flew a mix there of medevac and executive transport on turboprops. Wow. And then I was hired at uh, a company called Air Georgian, which is an Air Canada uh, feeder here in Toronto. And uh, I've been with them since 2005. Wow, so you got oh, wow. so much experience along the way in so many different planes and businesses mm -hmm. and areas. Yeah, so so it sounds like setting your sights for a, a particular position you wanted, but um, trying to build your resume. In the meantime, while you may be working in the job, you weren't uh, uh, bummed about it, but you were working, still working toward it every day and taking on different um, jobs, positions in, in aviation. And, uh, and until you until you could work your way there and uh, and earn that position. What are some of your favorite things about being a pilot? I know a lot of people say, oh, you get to travel all around the country. Is that true? Do you love seeing yeah, like, I mean, different spots? I, I make jokes. I kind of make jokes within my within my social media following. I, I refer to being a corporate pilot as you know palm trees and per diem. It's kind of like my little thing. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe merch coming soon. Maybe I don't know. Well, <laughs> So I mean it's a kind of a play on the um, on what I guess your typical trip, especially this time of year being the winter here in Toronto. Oh, yeah. You know the people that own private aircraft or have access to them generally will fly south. Um, yeah. So while they're down in Florida, I you know I, I flew them there. I fly them home, but in the middle it's not a whole lot for me to do. So I'm hanging out with palm trees and I'm making per diem. So that's kind of the the play on words. Some people call it vacationing, and other people's time and money, whatever you want to call it, however you want to call it. I love it. That's that is my favorite part of flying, uh, awesome. because of the nature of things of business aviation. I've gotten to fly to private islands that are only accessible by private oh, aircraft. So, that's so I've gotten cool. to see places that most people will never get to see, and that experience. I love travel, like like yeah. all of us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think being able to do that while I'm getting paid is just yeah. you know yeah. I, I don't know about you guys, but I remember as a kid, my parents would watch the Travel Channel on TV, and they look at me and Oh my God, I would love oh, yeah. to get paid to travel and, and do this. So I, I, I get the most, best of both worlds. I get to fly an airplane and I get to travel and I get to make money doing it. It's just, it's exactly. the perfect combination of things for me. Yep, and then we get a little taste of that with YouTube when we travel somewhere. If we make YouTube videos and get ad revenue, you know, we're almost getting paid to travel right. in a sense. So talking about social media, that's how we got connected. Um, Instagram. Yeah. Huge on Instagram. And when did you start this? When did you say, hey, let me expand to some social media stuff and give this whole thing a try? What made you get on Instagram? It's mainly you guys, to be honest. You guys are part of the, the subculture and, and the millennial generation that, you know, I look back on my flying today and I see social media and I see all these kids that have GoPros and iPhones and they get the, mm -hmm. you know, their entire first solo is caught on tape. You know, eight That's different true. angles, eight different GoPros outside, uh -huh. inside. And I'm just like, what I wouldn't do to have that on video. I would love to watch that. I'd pay so much to be able to get that and I, I can't. So I can't do anything about that then, but I can certainly start documenting my career now. So that was my catalyst, my springboard to getting, you know, social media started. Instagram was just a natural part of that. It was the, the biggest growing platform at the time. It was interesting. And it was what the millennials were doing. So I jumped on that. I decided, hey, let me see what this is all about. Let me try to start documenting my career. When it comes time for age 65 to come around and I retire, whenever that be, I'm saying 65, who knows. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can look back on my feed and my experience and my vault of pictures yeah. and videos yeah. and say, I mean, the same for you guys. You guys will be able to look back on your first car that you got that you put on YouTube and you'll be like, yeah, you guys probably do that now. Exactly, we think about that all the you know, time. You it's, it's the same thing. For those of you wondering, he's up over 200,000 followers on Instagram, right? Just taking wow. off. Um, if you guys have seen some of those like viral pictures, like air, airplane pictures, I saw the one, probably one of my favorites is you like sitting up in the engine. Right. Like that's right. crazy. I'll put up that shot up here. I love that picture. Um, so you just get some really cool pictures and then they spread, I've seen them all over the trending page and yeah. here and there and just. The engine one was just out of, out of pure boredom. Uh, <laughs> How'd you we even were, get up there? We were just waiting on the ramp for like four hours. There's no FBO for us to sit and relax and hang out oh, at. Oh, it was just like hang out at the airplane. And this airplane wasn't like a sovereign with a TV screens and an APU that I can run and air conditioning and stuff. So we didn't sit in the airplane because it was a hot summer day. So we're just around the airplane like, hmm, 
I always see these guys in the airline standing in their engines. Maybe I can sit in an engine. <laughs> Perch myself. So I kind of hopped up in there, took a picture, and that was kind of my thing now. So now that's every crazy. jet that I can fit my butt into, I kind of, I try to. Crazy. That. So that's how that started. Um, I'm wondering about, for, for some people who are excited about aviation, um, but maybe for one reason or another, uh, don't want to be a pilot, don't feel comfortable being a pilot, or or um, aren't able to be for some reason, what other uh, things can they do? Or maybe the social media aspect I was, I was wondering about. Um, we have friends um, b between Kieran and, and some other guys who uh, social, media, social media marketing is their uh, source of income and everything. Oh, yeah. I wonder what opportunities there are there uh, in the aviation space. Like, is the aviation space probably isn't, isn't huge on it, but would they would they be interested in um, you know is there an opportunity there for for younger people to uh, get into aviation that way work kind of in the in the industry without absolutely market for companies absolutely you know it's it's a it's a big thing now as you guys have seen you guys follow my feed but oh, yeah. you know it's companies like Embraer and Cirrus some of these for lack of a better word kind of young minded companies as far as their approach to marketing yeah. um, they're starting to really buy into social media mm -hmm. um, there's a company here in Toronto called NovaJet um, they're kind of getting trying to get their social media going as well um, I guess the best example that we have right now would be Wheels Up in, in oh, the yeah. US and I think, marketing I think everything. they're doing a, an amazing job of Instagram and social media and just their, uh, the way they're developing their brand and with, with those streams has is, is been really good. Um, and it gives a chance for people that are, that are you know, good at making videos on YouTube or good at social media and knowing their way around it to get into some of these companies and be a social media position. <clears throat> You know, my, my boss that just yeah. hired me, I got hired because he was a follower of mine on, on, wow. on social media. Both. So um, <laughs> here I am with a job that came from a job where they weren't very social media friendly to a principal now who is supporting me to the point of buying my camera setups and, you know, hiring an editor and, you know, flying with me to NBAA, flying mm -hmm. with me to Oshkosh, Sunnyfund, all these things and being just super supportive of it. So. Yeah. You know, I'm now called this the, I mean, it's a joke now, but in 10 years it may not be. Uh, the, I'm the vice president of social media for the company. So it's yeah. kind of silly, but I, I think if we fast forward 10 years, you're going to see that position in a lot of companies. I think it's a very, it's a very big opportunity for companies. And I think now is the time to start getting into it. Yeah, great. I think well, aviation is, yeah. a, is a ripe industry because um, maybe just not as young, maybe I don't see quite as many young people getting into it, but also um, something something so cool that maybe a, a lot of people don't have an up and close personal look at, but they do from their from their phones, from social media, they can feel like they're they're a part of it and everything. Yeah. So I think social media with, with it's, aviation it's a cool thing. Something right like being cool, a pilot is so cool. Exclusive, yeah. you know. And I think I think it would be would be popular for yeah, that. Yeah. So whether you want to be a hardcore pilot or not, there's so many opportunities in the industry. I like that the mm -hmm. marketing one. That, that's a big there's job. A lot of well, aviation is one of those kind of things that once you kind of have this, we, we all kind of refer to it as like the bug. Once you get this bug, no matter how far separated from aviation, you always have some sort of love for aviation. It's just always in you. And I think these yeah. positions that we're talking about, a social media position or whatever, they get into the company, and they start seeing aviation. They want to be part of it more. They want more, and they realize, oh well, okay, I'm doing social media for them, but maybe I should be a pilot. And they get their license yeah. on the side. You see yeah. this all the time. From I mean, the, the quintessential example would be flight attendants. How many flight attendants now in North America oh, yeah. alone start out as flight attendants and said, man, mm. I would really like to be a pilot, and have gone and gotten their licenses, and now are airline pilots. So that's true. The bug get hooked. It'll get you. So final departing departing advice. What if some um, yeah, to, to the people out there who say, I want to eventually have my private pilot's license, I want to get into this, I just don't know exactly where to start. What's your top three suggestions? Of, That's like, a good one. There's, a there's, there's, there's definitely three good avenues. If I had to do it all over again, yes. I'm a big proponent of this. I've said it on my social media feed many, many times. Okay. The best way to, for everybody to get into it nowadays, the smartest way being that we're business minded and we look at this as a career, a passion and a business. Mm -hmm. If you can bring the three of them together is ideal. Mm -hmm. um, military. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great way to serve on top of everything else. 
but you get a chance that you get into aviation, you learn it in the most regimented, professional manner true. possible. True. Um, you learn so many life lessons in the military, you learn leadership, you, you grow as a person so much in that mm -hmm. kind of an environment. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the other end, if you retire from it, on top of seeing the world, on top of meeting people all over the world, making friends that you'll probably have for your entire life mm -hmm. in the military service, you graduate or finish that with no debt, for one, yeah. which is a huge advantage. Flight mm -hmm. training is not cheap, um, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so that's you know, one hold up for a lot of people. Yeah, it's it, to be able to graduate or finish your, I guess, time building phase of your career um, with no debt and in, in the military way, you end up getting at the other end with a with a with a pension. And you fly you know, fighter jets. You got to fly fighter jets mm -hmm. or transports or helicopters or I mean a myriad of different kinds of airplanes. Training, transport, you name it. Debt free, you've flown all over the world, you've made a, friends for life, you've served sure. your country, you you finish with a pension, and then you have experience that most of, if not all of the major airlines in the United States today are looking for. They yeah. love military experience. Yeah, so that's true. if I had to do that's it again, one, yeah. I would do sure. military. Gosh. I like that. Yeah. The, the second good. one would be go to your, go to an aviation college, because I think that's the next true. best way of doing it. You're in a regiment, again, you're in a regimented environment. Yeah. To you're brought as a class and uh, you know kind of modules. You finish this and you finish this and you yeah. finish it. It's very set in stone. Mm -hmm. There's no timeline uh, snapshots of blank on your logbook. You're always training. It's a it's a steady mm -hmm. state evolution of a pilot. And I think that's the second best way to, to, to go about it. And it does combine that uh, surrounding yourself like minded with, right, that we were rules. talking about earlier, making connections uh, right. with people. Right. Okay. And and then of course, the final and third one would be going to your local flight school and, and, and doing it that way. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people have already. The great thing about the college is you usually graduate with a degree or diploma in something, so you have a a, a backup or something that could actually aid your career, depending if you go into management as a pilot or so on and so forth. But mm -hmm. uh, some people have already gone to school. There's all of some you know some of the audience here yeah. may already have a college degree or university diploma or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be, well, I don't want to go back to aviation college. I don't want to spend five years of college again, right. four years yeah. of college. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the flight school is the best avenue. You're going to have an education. So. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, ABC. Great <laughs> tips to get going. Um, um, and I'm sure once yeah. you do get going, once you you know involve yourself more and more, I'm sure the, the ball gets rolling and it's... And it just um, one thing after another, uh, everything starts making sense, kind of falling into place. I, I would hope. Did, did it kind of fall into place for you? or I think I, the, the life advice I give most people is it always seems to work out. No matter, it may yeah. not go as planned, it generally doesn't go as planned. I don't think any of us would think our lives would be here if we talked to each other <laughs> eight, ten years ago. Nope. <laughs> so it always works out. Uh, it never generally goes as planned. But as far as planning for your education, usually that does. So the career path obviously didn't go as planned. I was, you know, at this point, if you would have asked me 10, 15, well, 15, 20 years ago, I would have probably thought I'd be an Air Canada pilot. Um, but it turns out I'm not, and I'm much happier than I'm not. So the road here was a lot better, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Well, what a road it's been for you, and I hope our road plays out nicely. Um, um, I know sure we'll be will. asking you a bunch of questions and having you as such an awesome mentor. Isn't it? Yeah. So huge and we appreciate it greatly and guys follow him on Instagram if you're not already and and YouTube as well Hopefully we'll be posting some more YouTube videos now with the yep. new job new plane new Absolutely. new camera setups all that yep. good stuff We're hyper super hyped to see that so all that will be linked down below and um, Until the next video until we see you again um, I'm sure there's so much content we can be making comment future video suggestions down below if we're with him again You better bet we'll be filming more videos anytime guys Awesome. Thank you. Well, guys, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Like we said, drop a comment down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Connect with Jeffrey on all social media. And we will see you guys in the next one. Have a good day. Peace. See you guys. Boom. Awesome. Nailed that. That's how we do it. Nailed it. Good job. Awesome. <laughs>